Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Richard. I'm Richard Hines. Today's subject is going to be for my protection people out there. I think this is going to be an interesting subject and nobody talks about it. I haven't seen anything on it. So I'm going to talk about how to start a protection dog in two different ways. I have my two instructional videos on protection and I, the first one is how to play with your dog and get the elite skills through a toy. So you can build your elite protection dog skills of technique and control before putting them in real aggression with a decoy. The second part of that video is starting dogs from scratch with no toy development straight to aggression. So I show both versions. Okay, so again the toy one is developing in play and then going to go into the aggression phase the same as those other dogs are doing with a decoy. The difference is the toy developed dogs are developing the techniques behind the scenes before real aggression training starts. So that when they get to real aggression with a decoy, the skills are already built in there, making things much easier when a real decoy steps in to put real pressure and aggression on the dog. Okay, so there's a big difference. So in that video, my first instructional on protection training, I do both to show people how to start the dog in play if you don't have decoys to work with and just take your time and play with your dog to develop those elite skills. And again, other side of it, I show going straight to real aggression with no to play development and having to teach the high elite exercises while being in a fully aggressive high state of emotion, <laughs> right? Doing the same skills, okay? So there's a big difference. And since I'm working with this other shepherd right now, is a perfect way to show people the difference and how it looks and the outlook to dogs, okay? So I'm going to show you some clips here and you're going to see the black German Shepherd Axel. He has an orange ball that I throw out there and we're doing holding next to the leg on the long line, the first step of developing control. And I want you to see the difference in the attitude of these two dogs who are both exactly the same age when we started these skills. Axel the Black Shepherd was almost a year old in that in the video I'm going to show you here the clips when we started him in play protection and this other Shepherd Achilles all the same age about a year old and we're doing his side with no play development, straight to a real aggression protection. Okay, so I want you to see the difference in the state of mind when you start two completely different pathways. So watch here and just watch the clips, it'll be quick. Just watch, remember the Black Shepherd 
is doing play control. And Achilles, the other German Shepherd, is in real aggression, real fight mode. Watch the difference in the two, the way they bark, the way they push forward, the energy. So just take a look at these two dogs and the difference in the way they look, sound, and act. All right, so Axel, the black one, while you do this, you get a lot of talking because you get a lot of drive and passion. He loves that ball more than anything. <laughs> so, but you see, it's controlled easily. It's not the uh, into the lines and the right. Where Achilles, on the other hand, wants me bad, wants to fight me, cannot control himself, his mind is all over, blasting through the lines, he popped the prong collar off. That's how much power he's been putting into those lines to come and get after me right? One is in a passionate state, a play state. Just let me have my toy. Can I please have my toy? Right? But he knows he's got to bark and stay active and try to control himself on the leg to get the ball, to play with it. Achilles, on the other hand, just you challenge him at all, and he thinks there's any whiff of a fight, it is on, right? He is coming, and he wants to put the fight. He is in overdrive, real fight drive is what we call that, defense drive, fight drive, and he is not playing, right? So, and I just put up a few clips of him <laughs> over the last few days to a week of with me with no equipment on, this guy is coming for me, whether I have equipment on or not. He does not care. He just wants me. He wants to beat me down, eat me up. Boy! 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 Right? <laughs> but that's what we want in the end on a real protection dog. Now we're just trying to gain control over this because we don't want out of control, undisciplined protection dogs. Because that is a lawsuit in the making, also making confused dogs of when they can use something, when they can't. It's all over. There is no real boundaries to the game if you don't create them and make them understand the game of protection in my system is a game of absolute control. It's black and white. There is no gray area, right? That mistakes can happen. I won't allow. It has to be solid, solid, 100% on the money, right? On the technique, control, and when we tell them they can do something and they are not allowed to do something and just hold their ground until we say otherwise. That is a real protection dog. Okay? So, but you see, if you start in play drive and you do these things, 
dogs are a little calmer, right? They can think clearer. It's easier to bring them down in order for them to learn. When you go straight into real aggression and you get fight, it is much harder to bring them down to think clearly to learn the exercises of control because they just lose their minds and go into absolute fight mode, right? So it's two completely different mindsets. Now, like I've said, one's not better than the other, both are fine, as long as you know what you're doing, right? So that's why you mostly see, right, in sport dogs, I always talk about this if you've seen any of my shots in versus real protection dogs or anything like that. I was showing shots in dogs or IPO, ring sport dogs, and hunting dogs in one of the videos. And showing that in the sports, the trainers want them calm and wait there for their reward, their toy, bird, right? Decoy, who's a toy. Shuts and decoy with the sleeve on, who's a toy. It's, the dogs are not going after man. It's about playing with the suit, the sleeve, or going to get the duck, okay? It's all in prey drive. So I've always said in sport training, it's much easier, right, to get a dog to learn and to control sport dogs much easier, right? Yes, you got to control the drive and adrenaline, but that's why sport trainers and hunters don't give any reward to the dogs unless they're in a calm state. Because then it would very, be very difficult for the sport trainers and hunters to deal with their dogs, right? Because the dogs, if they got emotional, would be blowing out and just breaking the exercises, right? And the trainers would have a very hard time trying to hone them in and control them, okay? So that is why the sports, dog protection sports, hunters all want calm state before they reward. And again, in the protection sports, they're not hunting the man. They don't want to really fight the man. It's about play, right? It's all about playing and playing with the sleeve and all that. There's nothing personal to the man. Okay, and I've explained that in the other videos. <laughs> I had a long video on showing the differences in the mentality and psychology of the dogs in the games and the, the psychology the game tries to put on the dogs to keep them down and not let them be emotional because then it's very difficult to, difficult to control them. So, but in real protection, right, we need real aggression and we need real talking, and we want real fight at man. Right, right. Oh, careful. <laughs> Not going after the equipment, okay? So it's much harder to bring these guys down and concentrate them on holding control exercises when they're just like this, I gotta fight, I just wanna hurt them, right? Let me fight them, okay? Big difference in, in <laughs> the emotion, the energy, the drive, okay? And the clear thinking. Here with Achilles, little bit of a problem right for us as the trainers now of him is when he came to us the trainers who do protection 
at their facility, the canine officers. Dogs are great, breedings are great, but the training is geared a certain way without control. So it's constant leash up in the air, rah, 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 and then grabbing the sleeve and playing and, and all that, right? Okay, right. Are you nice? Okay, boy. Okay, boy. Right, man. Good. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. So the longer that goes on makes my life much harder. I will get it done. All will be done. 100% all dogs that we do this with, 100% will learn the skills and control. It just might take a few days more, right, if they're really throttled, like Achilles. So if you allow a dog to jump on a line and go crazy with no discipline and no control, right? Like I've said many, many times before, that jumping on a leash and going crazy is not protection. It is not a protection dog. And people sell those all the time and people think that that's real protection. That's chaos. That's out of control. There's no skill to that. And having a working dog just jump on the end of a line takes no skill whatsoever or any effort to teach. They do it naturally. Right? Just bring something out that they're interested in. They'll go crazy on the end of a leash and go nuts without even teaching them. Right? There is no skill to that. There is no teaching to that. It's just letting a dog go crazy wild. No discipline. No control. Whatever you put in there, they will go and grab. Don't even have to teach that either. Right? So when you see that kind of exercise, it's just chaotic nonsense. <laughs> That's what we call in our, my system pre-protection work, right? That is getting a dog's energy there and just making sure they bite properly before we go put all the control on it and make a real protection dog, right? But by no means is a dog that jumps on a leash and does this a protection dog. Okay, okay, right. Are you nice? Okay, boy. Far from it. Not even close. That's what we call nursery school, right? Kindergarten dog. So Achilles having this over and over and over in his career up until a year old, he has learned that chaos and out of control mentality and no discipline, just flying on the end of a line out of control, right? He will always get his reward of the bite sleeve while he's in chaos and no discipline, right? So you're just rewarding the behavior over and over and over and over and over and over of just going crazy, right? So the dog now understands that discipline has no part of this game. He doesn't need to. He never has to use his mind. He just has to get emotional and go crazy. Bring it closer, right? And then, of course, they give him the sleeve as a reward. And he wins again, and he now knows that all this chaos and crazy on a line and pulling on a leash and, right, no structure, no discipline, no skills, gets him what he wants. So now, a trainer like me, who gets this kind of dog, goes, ugh, uh, all right, if it was done temporarily, you know, few weeks, month, fine, still you're going to have to turn it around and have to deal with this, you know, a little bit. Months to half a year to up to year, and that's all you know. Now you got to turn around this whole year of what he thinks of protection or what he knows it as. Just flip out, chaos, lunacy, no discipline, no control, chaos, there's no rules to the game. It's psycho time right which is a lawsuit in the making for a, a person who buys a dog like this and has this kind of uncontrollable dog in society right now Achilles is a great dog 
he's not off the hook. He doesn't just go bite anybody. It's not like that, right? That's why we have him because we want the stability that he's a great family dog. He's living with four children with us now, right? I mean, he's fantastic as a personality, wonderful family dog. Take him out, no problems. He's not going after everybody or anything like that. It's just when he knows it's party time to do protection, he cannot control himself and there are no rules, no boundaries, and it's on. So imagine you go out in public like that and you need him eventually and he's supposed to be here and heal and you just go, watch, right? And his watch is gonna be fly off to the end of the line and you're gonna be going like this and having to hang on for your life because there's no rules, no boundaries, no discipline all you said was to alert and then the dogs fly on the handle because there is no game right no control how close was the person <laughs> right so you have no control over any of that it's just a bad terrible i say lawsuit waiting to happen so that's why we have to have such control and such structure no accidents in public all as well they love people love children dogs right they're completely social balanced right no pissy stuff no growling at people for no reason or children okay anybody can pet them unless we turned them on you wouldn't see it that is the ideal protection dog so right now achilles because he was not developed in play we have to start his structure game right now while he's in high throttle out of his mind mode wanting to eat me alive <laughs> right i mean he's not playing when he's engaged with me he's coming for me right he's I mean, he breaks the prong collars off. He's so hard. We always have an extra line on him because you know the guy is coming. We have to have extra things for security, right? Because he had no development of structure up until he came to me. And I'll show it over the next week. Very quickly, we'll have Achilles down. Perfect off the leash. Biting when he's supposed to. All will be well, right? It's just we need maybe a few days extra to bring that throttle down and teach that structure. So, yeah, this is big difference between the two, okay? And on my instructional video, again, I show many dogs, shepherds, rottweilers, right, boxer, all starting their real protection game and real aggression from the beginning on how to hold and circle and walk backwards. And all those things right in real aggression. There was no play development on any of those dogs. But it is much easier, again, if you do it the way I did it with Axel, the black German Shepherd, with the ball. Getting to real aggression makes it so much easier, right? Now you're just fine tuning and very quickly, I have an elite protection dog that don't need leashes for. I mean, so giving you there because a lot of people are not aware. I get emails all week long from all over the world that they just want to kick in to protection mode and get their dogs really protection trained, okay? Not understanding 
that there's a difference and prep work right makes a difference so another episode of coffee with richard so till next time i'm richard hines miami dog whisperer <laughs>